Hey, folks! Well, jeez. The Leafs are... They suck! Marner hat trick. Leafs are the best! Lose to Boston. Then they beat the Sens! This is so inconsistent. Uh... So is their schedule, too. It's a little bit nuts. It's crazy, in fact, and we're going to break it all down for you right here on the Ozone. You're in the offensive zone. Your place for Leafs hockey. Hey, folks. Welcome to the Ozone. That's Coach. We love you, KD. I'm the diva. We're here to talk all things Leafs. Coach, as always, I'm coming to you from the HQ in downtown Toronto. Where are you at? I'm back in London today, Devo. Uh, had an office Christmas party in Belfast last night, oh. and uh, I was overserved. <laughs> well, I'd say Those top people... of the morning to you, but I know it's a little bit later than that now. I was a little fuzzy still top of this morning. Uh, the Irish can drink. <laughs> oh. oh, that's sweet. Okay, folks, remember, hit subscribe, ring the bell. You'll never miss any content. Like and share the video, spreads the word, and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. It helps us get better. Okay, these Leafs coming off a win against the Senators. Doesn't really seem like a big deal, but it is. The Leafs normally can't beat teams like this, so that's not too bad. Uh, lots of days off again, crazy schedule, but oh goodness, they held on to a win, but they lost Joseph Wall to injury and it didn't look good. Coach, what did you see? So coming off like a five day break, you know, battle of Ontario, first night of Hanukkah, you'd think they'd come out flying, but they really didn't. Um, Mm. they barely had the puck. It was a really rough game to watch. By Mm. the way, speaking of Hanukkah. Let me get my buddy Mitch Rothbart a shout out. Happy Hanukkah, buddy! Um, first one today, Lahayim. So uh, that you know, <laughs> Mitch is my guy, right? I hate you. Look, you hate to see Joseph Wall go down. Mm. As great, he stole the two points. He was in the fifty minutes he played. He was outstanding. Yes, Vladimir, Vladimir Tarasenko should have had a pair at least, right? Yeah. And Joseph Wall was really starting to roll. Like he, there was no question. He had won the crease, uh, and and he was really starting to get consistent. Now he's uh, top ten in the league in save percentage among guys mm-hmm. that have played a bunch of games. I mean, it, it really consistent. Like we were hoping, we would develop a homegrown goalie. Last guy we, that we did that with was James Reimer a yeah. long time ago, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so now he's out. But here's the problem: like Ilya Samsonov is not right. He, he didn't need dress again last night. He's been sick, but he's been sick for what, Devo? Yeah. A couple of weeks? Like, he's not right. And when he wasn't sick, he still wasn't right. Yeah. He, he just, you know, he's played a couple good games, but he's really struggled, and he's been honest about it. This could be a really bad situation. Um, you don't want to have to rely on Martin Jones or Dennis Hill to be to play any, to any uh, hockey, right? Yeah. Um, could be a challenge. Look, the Leafs weren't good versus Ottawa. Should have lost that game. Um, on the Ottawa side, I feel bad for DJ Smith. Yeah, like they, they had a lot of expectations, and they're still not very good. Um, no. And then they went and hired Jacques Martin as a consultant. Sounds like the clock's ticking over yeah, there for DJ. For sure. Hot seat. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it was really difficult to watch. Uh, Watch the teammates and, and trainers carry Wall off the ice to the dressing room. It doesn't look good. Uh, maybe we get good news, uh, and it's not as bad as I fear. Uh, but just he couldn't put weight on it. It looks like a knee problem, and that's uh, that's a bit of a death knell to the season, if that's the case, at least for him. Listen, Looking like me walking out of the thirsty goat last <laughs> night in Belfast, actually. <laughs> The goat wasn't thirsty by the end of the night. Okay. <laughs> Neither was I. Listen, Coach, going into that game last night, the Leafs were tied dead last with five regulation wins. What is the issue? Is it is it really the bottom six? Is it the D? Is it the goaltending? Is it the power play? Is it the stars? Who is it? Is it a little bit of everything? Is it the, what, what's yeah, going on? Well, with that win last night, regulation win, they're now a nice tied for 27th in the league in, in uh, regulation wins. Look, uh, I don't know what to make of it, Devo. You remember Bill Parcells, the big tuna, 
He used to say, you are what your record says you are. But which record should we look at? Seven, one, and two in the last 10. Uh, sixth in the league in winning percentage. That's mm -hmm. good. But six regulation wins is not good. Mm -hmm. The team, they're, how many games have they played where they've been good this year? I could count two. That Vancouver win, right? Right before they took the break and went to Sweden, they were good. Yep. They, they beat a very good Vancouver team. Yep. And then probably the game they lost against Boston. Like they were good in that game. Much that was their best. They were in the I, win against Ottawa. So I agree. I don't even know what to point at record wise, but I mean, fortunately, nobody's running away with it. Yep. A lot of teams are struggling at this time of year that hope to be good, right? Yep. Um, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Tampa. John Cooper's losing it with this Tampa team. You see him yelling on the bench. Yep. Washington, even New Jersey was supposed to be good. They're all like worse winning percentage wise than the Leafs. And then Ottawa and Buffalo were supposed to be up and comers, and they're not. So fortunately, with the Leafs being so inconsistent, um, it's not like anybody's running away, and I don't think we're in, in uh, risk of missing the playoffs. Um, but everybody's been inconsistent, maybe, with the exception of Nylander, cooled off a bit. Mm -hmm. Morgan Riley's been good, and Joseph Wall's been the most consistent. That yeah. Was that guy. That's uh, it, it's a heartbreaker, and it really changes things uh, for this team, particularly if it looks like the prognosis is season or anything you know uh, farther out there. It 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 jumbles your priorities pretty quick, and it it makes you kind of one dimensional as you go into trade deadline yeah. talk. But let's not talk about that yet. There may be things that happen before that might help stabilize this team, and who knows what that's going to be. I mean. Is it a personnel shakeup you think that has to happen here? Like do you go out and you know sign a guy like Perry, or or do you make a big blockbuster trade for a guy like Tanev or something else? Like what 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 do you think would get the biggest bang for for the buck, so to speak? Debo, don't you think we would have answered that differently twenty four hours ago? But yeah, you know, now Wall goes down, um, and and all of a sudden that's staring you in that like a real problem is potentially. Staring yep. us in the face. Um, I, I don't know if there's many moves to be made at this time of year. It's a really tough time of year to go and, mm -hmm. and make something happen. You know I'm as reactionary as the Leaf <laughs> Nation in general. I love the idea of a shakeup. I don't know. Um, so one guy you could go get, you mentioned him, Corey Perry. And let's, let's not kid ourselves. On the ice, he would be an ideal fit for this team. Ideal mm -hmm. team. All kinds of grit. Really tough to play against, and he can still play, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, you got to find out what he did. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, I don't know, maybe who he did um, before <laughs> before you go and make a call on that guy. I and you mentioned Tanev. I think he'd be a great fit too. And he just defends. He's solid, and he's his curve is the correct way. The right, he's got a yep. right curve. But uh, uh, you know, they couldn't get that deal done. Apparently, they were talking. I think it was about retention, though, right? Retaining yep. the salary. Now you got Klingberg's money. Could they go back and revisit that? I, I don't know. I hope so. I think he'd be a good fit. But I, I just don't see any big deals, especially goaltending. Let's face it. We think we've got a problem coming up here with goaltending because we're not sure about Samsonov. Yep. Hey, other teams have it really bad. Look out west, Edmonton, right? They'll outbid yep. us if there's a, a decent goalie available. Sure. I think. Yeah, I, I mean, you mentioned the cap money. We do; uh, it's now official. There's some cap money to to spend yeah. there with Klingberg. I, we we more or less knew that when he went to the LTIR. We just weren't really too sure what was going to happen. But with hip surgery, it, 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 you know, he officially is off the books. So, you know, if the Leafs did want to add a piece, they could. It's I think I didn't look today, but I think they probably have about two point five to two point seven to spend roughly. Let me ask you this though. If there was a piece out there that you can, and, and this is the frustrating thing about uh, maybe the other piece in Calgary that went out, that, that stayed out West, uh, that was a cap issue as well. And you yeah. didn't really know what yeah. was going to happen with Klingberg, but with Klingberg now off the books and maybe you can wave Reeves, that deal could have happened and you didn't have to have any, any retention for, uh, for Zadaroff. Uh, and to me, he was a really good fit because he right curve and and big and mean and the Leafs could definitely use something like that but what do you think like 
do you wave a guy like Reeves uh, in order to make a move or something like that? I think he played what, like seven minutes last last night against the the Sens by by far the least uh, of the players. Can you it's justify keeping him on? Yeah, yeah, it's tough to watch Devo. I mean, yeah. he has not a fight since October fourteenth. Yeah, that, that's two months. You know how I know it was October fourteenth? That was the same day I called Justin Trudeau for advice on what I should wear for Halloween. <laughs> um, I, I didn't take that advice, but, uh, but yeah, seven minutes a night and he's just noticeably slow out there. It, yep. It's awkward, but, um, yeah, I, I agree with you for sure. Klingberg's situation now has some certainty. It'd be hard to make that move if then maybe he bypasses surgery rehabs and then he comes back. Where do you, mm -hmm. what do you do? You yep. can't just get, get rid of his money. Right. So this is mm -hmm. better, but, um, the thing with waving Reeves is, so I think he's at 1.3 or something. You can save 1.125 of that. That's the most you can you can bury, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so that's good, but you got to replace him with somebody, right? So even a guy on like the league minimum is 750. So 750 or eight of that's coming back up. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you save all that much. I think uh, you got to send salary out still. Yeah. To, to get a guy in to get to shore up the D. Now, if they would take him, fantastic. And in fact, you, you and I were talking about maybe you, you were thinking when Joseph Wall was was on and, mm -hmm. and healthy, maybe Ilya, right? Maybe, right? Because Martin Jones could be, he's, he's played 450 NHL games, but obviously that's gone too. That's gone. So, that's off the table. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Now it's batting down the hatches, right? And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope he's able to still get something done. I still though I, I think the market broadens. It's not just maybe a Calgary guy. The closer you get to the deadline when more teams are out of it and looking to retool and, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's tough. It's a little easier now, but I think it's still tough. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's change gears a little bit here, Coach. You mentioned, uh, you know, feeling bad a little bit for uh, for DJ. In uh, in Ottawa, uh, I, I, as much as it's easy to hate a lot about the Senators, it's it's hard uh, it's hard to not have a soft spot for uh, uh, for DJ. I know a yeah. lot of a lot of people in the Toronto market do, um, but we've seen a few coaches already this year get gone, um, yeah. and 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 we've seen some of the those the teams that have made those moves have had you know, the typical bounce Edmonton perhaps is the best example of that. Um, they responded when, when, uh, Chris Knobloch took over. Uh, and before I go to where everyone thinks I'm going on this, who else do you think is on the sort of immediate hot seat right now? I mean, we mentioned DJ Smith. I mean, Mike Sullivan is John Cooper there. Uh, somebody else. What do you think? Yeah, I, I Interest. I, I think Mike Sullivan is a you know a losing streak away, uh, and maybe not a long one. Mm -hmm. um, that's and we know the GM, but mm -hmm. he's new to that market, and Sullivan's not his guy, and he's been there a while. And you know the, the, your voice gets tuned out after a while. I think he's an excellent coach, but maybe I I find it hard to believe. I wonder how cutthroat Breezebois is in Tampa to be mm -hmm. able to let Cooper go. Cooper's been great. Ugh. Right. And they're not too far removed from, you know, two cups and then a finals. Like he's coached a lot of hockey with that group. Maybe they're tuning him out. I figure he's got a longer leash. Here's who Sorry. shouldn't have a long leash. Our guys won one series, <laughs> yeah. you know, in the in the in the Matthews era. And they've yeah. been in the class every year of that era. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would give Cooper the benefit of the doubt way more. Than guys like DJ Smith or uh, even Sheldon Keith. By the way, you mentioned DJ Smith. We feel bad for him. You know who else does? One of our subscribers, Ronnie Vogel, played with him on the Windsor Spitfires. Right. Folks, our subscriber base is all over the place. You're yeah. going to bump into one. It's like that whole uh, Doogie Hauser thing or whatever it was. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I don't know. Still not there. Well, listen, uh, Belfast will will do that to you. A, a, a couple other things I want to ask you. I, this is a this is a loaded question. Uh, this question is a bit like you staggering around Belfast. I see what you did there. Loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say there is a move, um, 
and one of these sort of uh, what I would call blue chip coaches. Let's say, let's I'll give two examples: Sullivan and Cooper. Okay, yeah, probably not going to happen. But let's say some GM wakes up, they don't get the right frappuccino in the morning or something like that, and they do something rash, and one of these guys becomes available. Does that change your thinking uh, in Toronto as Toronto's brass? Do you sort of go, you know, I'm not going to make a move because I'm committed to my guy, and then you're like, ooh, but there's something shiny there. Like, does that factor in? It would for me. I wonder, I mean, we're really talking about true living. Um, maybe. So if he had a connection with either of those guys, then then I think it's it's more likely. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I, I think it's uh, it'd be tricky for he'd be concerned about optics. Am I, you know, am I, am I doing this thing without really thinking it through? But mm-hmm. boy, I, John Cooper's a better coach than Sheldon Keefe. I, I can't see you arguing anyone arguing otherwise. Yeah. Mike Sullivan, too, has coached stars, yeah. right? And he has won. He's yeah. got two cups. So I, I think I would do it today. Remember Bruce Boudreaux, yeah. right? He gets let go in Washington, then he caught on like really, really quick in Vancouver, and he turned that around, too. Yeah. I like Dean Evason. He'd be a great quote. He's fiery, too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. here's the other thing. We got a guy on staff with uh, head coaching experience, Guy yeah. Boucher. I'm not too thrilled about watching the trap. Yeah. But uh, you know, maybe he's evolved. Don't love that. Can the... we agree though? It's not Mike Babcock, right? He's not I don't think back. I don't think Babs is coming back. All right, folks, that was fun. All right, folks, there you have it. Everything you need to know about the Leafs, you come here, and we love having you. Right here on the Ozone.